This is the current look of my game, but according to your feedback, I should try to make it unique. And since it's devlog time, let's see what I accomplished in the last weeks. Actually, development didn't start with improving the R, but with adding sound and visual effects to spice up the combat a bit more. At the same time, I fixed some balancing issues of the abilities when this comment hit me straight into the face. The increasing popularity of synthy assets is becoming quite a problem, considering the fact that I indeed want unique art in my game. So I postponed the implementation of the ability system and came up with two solutions. Find a way to make synthy assets unique and save 200 bucks worth of assets, or create thousands of assets myself, which will take until I look like Gandalf, because my skills as an artist equals zero. It might be obvious which way I should try out first, but because I'm pretty good in making wrong decisions, I found myself in Blender with a bunch of reference pictures and a character creation course. I had to face a few issues, including this creepy normal map bug, but after hours in Blender I came up with this. Honestly, I didn't expect the character to turn out anything close to that, but for the amount of time I put into the creation, he doesn't look good enough and made too many problems when I tried to implement him into the player blueprint. Luckily, I learned a few techniques that I can apply to the low poly assets to give them a unique look. So I went back to Blender and what should I say, the result looks definitely unique. Honestly, I have no idea what created this monster, so I went through the whole process of UV editing, texture painting and normal baking again, and now we have this. It looks quite good, but before we apply the feature with the largest effect on the overall art style, I remade some props and created a new terrain to give you a complete overview of the art style. It took a few minutes until I figured out that I need a base material with this layer blend node, but after that painting the terrain was as simple as it should be. Those textures already improved the environment quite a lot, but it's still flat, so let's change that by adding grass and flowers. First the brush was a little bit ambitious, but after a few minutes the terrain looked pretty good. The only problem I encountered was the broken leaf material on the reworked trees. For some reason the wind effect didn't work anymore and all my attempts of fixing the material led to quite unique wind effects but they might be a bit too unique. At the end Google told me all I had to do was changing this to replace before re-importing the tree. So with moving leaves back in the game and a basic water material the environment was done and is ready for a comparison. So finally we can apply the last feature, cell shading. I came up with the idea after a friend of mine forced me to watch Attack on Titan. I really liked the look of it and decided to do some research on how to achieve something similar in Unreal Engine. This research led from some interesting visuals to this cartoon look, but I wasn't sure if that's what I want the game to look like. So I removed the outline and added more levels of lighting. What I mean by this is that I have one color for the shadow, one color for the light and now I added in between sub values to have this sort of a gradient. Personally, I like this art style the most, but since you should like the art of the game as well, I'd love to hear your opinion. Should I use this cell shaded style with no outlines, or should I continue with the outline cell shader? I could try out the outline on more or less the stylized look as well. Or do you think the game looks best with the stylized look and no outline? Obviously, I don't know what you think, maybe none of this is unique enough, so please tell me and if you want to stay up to date, consider to subscribe. But now thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time with a small side project.